And this is a response to a series of verses on the holy name. So we'll continue. Urva bahu, urva bahu karakonas, sunas arva loka, namasutta gantipara, kate e sloka. Uh, this is Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami speaking. Raising my hands, I declare, everyone, please hear me. String this verse on the thread of the holy name and wear it on your neck for continuous remembrance. Report. When chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, in the beginning, one may commit many offenses, which is called Namabhas or Namaparad. In this stage, there is no possibility of achieving perfect love of Krishna by chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. Therefore, one must chant the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra according to the principles of the above verse. Shrnadapi sunichena tayoriva suhishnuna. One should note in this connection that chanting involves the activities of the upper and lower lips as well as the tongue. All three must be engaged in chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. The words Hare Krishna should be very distinctly pronounced and heard. Sometimes one mechanically produces a hissing sound instead of chanting with the proper pronunciation with the help of the lips and tongue. Chanting is very simple, but one must practice it seriously. Therefore, the author of Chaitanya Charitamrita, Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami, advises everyone to keep this verse always strung about his neck. Omegyan timidandasya gnajana salakaya chaksu militam yena tasmai shri guruvena maha. Shri Chaitanya Manobistam Staptitam Yena Bhotale Swayam Rupa Kadam Mayam Dadanti Swam Padantikam Maom Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Shri Makti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Tinamine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pacharine Nir Visesa Sunyavadi Pasyatya De Satarine Panchakalpa Tarubis Chakri Pasindu Bay Bachapatitanam Pavane Bio Vaishnave Bio Namahona Maha Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadat Har Sivasadi Gor Bhaktavrindam Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare Hare Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Rama, Hari Hari. So, hmm, it's interesting to note here that there are two aspects that are being mentioned here for improving the qualities of one's chanting. And that is, there is a practical suggested technique that should be, a, not technique, but I, uh, you might say a type of wrong way to chant and that we should be recognized and avoided. And also here we find, of course, the basic principle here is that it's about developing a certain mood in the practice of our chanting. So both are there. I'll speak about the practical one first. Prabhupada should notes here, he said, one should know in this connection that chanting involves the upper activities of the upper and lower lips, as well as the tongue. All three must be engaged in chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. The word Hare, words Hare Krishna should be very distinctly pronounced and heard. Sometimes one mechanically produces a hissing sound instead of chanting with the proper pronunciation with the help of the lips and tongue. Chanting is very simple, but one must practice it seriously. 
So what his Prabhupada is mentioning in that section I just read is that one should be conscious of how one is pronouncing the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. And here it says, now distinctly pronounced and heard. This, these two words are somewhat the foundation for the improvement. Of, we should hear the name clearly and simultaneously take in that sound at the, at the same time. In other words, we can chant and we can hear and still think of other things. But the hearing will be minimized and sometimes almost completely blocked when we think of other things than, picking, than concentrating on the sound itself. So that will minimize the hearing process. And sometimes you'll see devotees will, they're, they're chanting and they're hearing, but they're, they're thinking about something else. I think we all experience that. And we notice that when we're doing this for a certain period of time, we start to catch ourselves and start again connecting back to the sound again. So this hearing can be minimized and therefore the effects of the chanting will be drastically reduced. Distinctly pronounced, again, if the mind is deviated to other thoughts and ideas, we sometimes lose the clarity of our chanting because we're not really concentrating on hearing the sound nicely. So there's no checks and balances of whether how to, how to improve or not improve. We just go on, it's almost like, it becomes like a tape recorder just going on and on and on. It's like nobody's there <laughs> if the sound is just coming. And a lot of times because of that, the ability to chant clearly is greatly impaired. And then the words are either pushed together, the sounds of the names are pushed together, or the distinction of the clarity of the actual name itself, it gets somewhat mixed in and it sounds like something different. <laughs> and here Prabhupada also says, it produces, it, produces a hissing sound. And that Prabhupada uses the word mechanically produces a hissing sound. So these things are something we should note because bhakti really means not only to know what to do, but what to avoid. What to avoid in this situation is pronouncing unclearly or not pronouncing properly. And this hissing sound, we sometimes we hear that the devotees get going, it, it uh, actually sounds like they're doing something else with their tongue instead of chanting. So that may automatically arise because of improper hearing and chanting. Hearing proper chanting and improper hearing like that. So these things, these are practical things to be, to be noted down and very much distinctly avoided, which one should be very conscious of that. Now, the other part, of course, is one of the ways to increase the quality of our hearing is to uh, engage, when you begin your chanting, chant very, very clearly, slowly to catch the sound distinctly. Um, there are certain mindsets that are impair, that impair good chanting, such as 
I have, I'm trying to finish as fast as I can. And that's the probably one of the worst, where maybe comes a race in order to finish. Uh, and then devotees fall into that because they have so many things they have to do. And chanting gets pushed in between that sometimes. One of the ways to avoid that, which I highly recommend, is chant your rounds first before you do anything in the morning. And then you just use whatever time is available and you make that time to hear and chant. And that's all. You don't talk to anybody. You don't do any other things unless it's, you keep the cell phone off. Um, there are certain emergencies that may appear certain times. You may, uh, you know, deviate for that. But that sh we shouldn't be so interested in get getting, getting our text messages and phone calls during our Japa time. So the best way is to shut the phone off and just chat. <laughs> Uh, because if you leave the phone on, you'll be distracted. You'll hear that sound of the text message coming. You'll hear the phone ringing. You'll start to think who's calling. And then you might even become so confused that even if you don't pick up the phone, then you, it may also cloud your consciousness as you try to continue to chant and you keep thinking back, well, who calls? Was it important? Maybe I should have picked it up. No, so avoid that, shut the phone off. <laughs> the world will still go on whether your phone is on or not. So, yeah. Um, I mean, there are extreme emergency cases, but they're very rare. And I don't think that should be a consideration for, for allowing yourself to be distracted. And then these are some practical things. And then carefully, very clearly, chant the holy names. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Yeah, clearly, distinctly, hearing each one. If you start off too fast, too fast means you're not hearing each and every syllable of the mantra. Right speed means you're ke te taking in the sound as it comes from your tongue. And then as that sound starts to become consistent within the hearing process, without any extra endeavor, you'll see and you'll experience your chanting will automatically increase in uh, speed. The speed will automatically increase. But we want to hear nicely. And in order to do that, we have to chant nicely. In order to chant nicely, we have to hear at a, chant at a speed that works where we can acquiesce that speed that works where we can hear everything nicely. Now, if you're tired, now that's going to be another problem. Of course, sometimes we wake up early and we want to chant and we're a little tired and the mind's running all over the room. Um, acharyas do recommend that when you find yourself in that situation, you can increase your speed, which helps to become more focused on the sound. And that helps to overcome the tiredness to a certain degree. If it continues, continues, and you have to seek, maybe I should take a little bit of rest and then chant a little bit later. So that is an option also. So we're always constantly critiquing our own chanting, looking for the, you know, the positive things that we can apply and avoiding those things that are negative. And one of the most important principles, and now we'll go to the area of the spiritual aspect is prayer. Now, 
it is explained that the best of all prayers is the Chai Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. It is the supreme prayer of all prayers. So, so when we chant the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, we should also support that quality of our chanting or the ability to develop quality by praying to spiritual master, Srila Prabhupada, especially Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, very especially to Srila Haridas Thakur. Now, one, of course, you can also pray to Krishna too, but these are some of the, and then we have circulated, and I think I did that at least two times since we've had this, this daily talk, the importance of reading these prayers prior to our chanting, and in even some cases reading it or reciting these prayers during the chanting. And one of the most helpful prayers which sets the foundation for nice chanting is the Sri Shikshastikam prayers. And Prabhupada is quoting the third verse of Shikshastikam here as the foundation. And this is what Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami is referring to when he says, string this verse on the thread of the holy name and wear it on your neck for continuous remembrance. He is talking about that verse. Trinadapi Sunichena. It comes up in a series of verses prior to this verse as the last verse and to illustrate how one should approach the holy name like that. So this, this um, verse contains four principles. Humility, tolerance, pridelessness and uh, giving respects to all others. Mm -hmm. So learning a little bit about each of these principles and applying them in a conscious effort, that will help to develop the proper mood by which Krishna is attracted to our chanting and chanting in the hub. Now, when we realize, or when we understand the realizations of the statements in the Shastras, which say that this material world is a dangerous place, and we are uh, completely controlled by the three modes of material nature, and at any time, our existence can be destroyed, at least within the present body, when we realize that this material world is not a nice place, it's not a place to be happy, <laughs> it's not a place to fulfill your lifelong desires, it's a place that you have to rectify yourself, it's a jail, the material world is com compared to a jail, the locking process is three types of cells, the mode of goodness, the mode of passion, the mode of ignorance. Each of the cells have their own forms of punishment, but only those who are above the three modes are free. So we might not be above the three modes of material energy, but the chanting can be practiced above the three modes of energy by applying these principles, Trinadapi, Sunichanata, or Ivasahishnana. These help not to cut through the, uh, the, the materialistic consciousness which keeps us attached to this material tabernacle. So one has to practice that. So pra Krishna, uh, it's not like when you, so when you begin Krishna, chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, everything is going to be rosy. I'm a devotee. Yeah, everybody likes me. I, you know, everybody, you know, I'm a nice guy. I help so many people. I'm a nice lady. I cook so nicely. You know, you think, well, now, now all I have to do is chant and, and then now I'll even be better. 
Yeah, that's true. But if you don't approach it in the right way, then it becomes hard. And of course, removing the offenses to chanting of the holy names, and that's a whole other subject that we can get into at one point, describing the 10 offenses and explaining each and every one of them and how to avoid these 10 offenses. But the importance is that we must develop this mood of wanting to improve the quality of our chanting by working to learn what is required in order to do that. And the most important thing is the enthusiasm to chant Krishna's name. And that enthusiasm will allow us to adopt whatever we need in order to uh, be successful in chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. Sometimes it takes decades to get through the offenses. And sometimes it may not happen until the end of the lifetime. Or sometimes it may happen even after one or two years of Krishna consciousness. It depends on you and your previous connection with the chanting of the holy name. And the mercy, so begging for mercy is important in helping us. And as Srila Bhaktivinoda Kaur says, no one can chant attentively, which is, which is chanting, unless one prays for attentive chanting. But one has to practice that attentive chanting as a regular feature of our chanting. Okay, so these are some things. And then, of course, Trinata Pisuni Chena, that is self explanatory right there. Uh, what is humility? Humility means Krishna is great and I am small. Therefore, I'm dependent on him. And the best way to become dependent on him is to call out for him in the form of his holy name. As was said nicely yesterday by Sri Devi, as a child cries out for a mother, that's not a eulogy or an exaggeration, or it's a good way to, um, to under, understand what is the mood of chanting. When a child cries out for the mother, you'll find that there's two types of cries. Those of you who are mothers, you know, I've had some experience, so I've also understood and also been confirmed by other mothers that ch children cry for their mother in two different ways. One is they simply want attention because their desires are not be being filled. And that is a, a fake form of crying that child's children use. It seems real, it sounds real, but it's not real. The real form of child is that when the child realizes without my mother, I am nothing. I am helpless, I am fearful, I am frightened. And that child, that crying of the child, the mother immediately recognizes. No one else can recognize it, only the mother. And then she's immediately there to you know pick up the child. So that's the kind of child crying that should be coming from the mood of our chanting that we are simply dependent completely on Krishna in all cases. And he's given us that means to connect our dependence on him through his holy name. So that's humility. And tolerance, we understand that. There are so many things we have to tolerate in this world. We have to tolerate the, the minds giving us trouble, the body giving us trouble, getting sick. We have to tolerate uh, other people who want to give you trouble or those who don't want to give you trouble but still give you trouble. <laughs> and then, of course, higher powers, pestilence, wars, 
uh, earthquakes, calamities um, from the weather points of view. You know, that's also another form of tolerance that needs to be adopted. And so there's some, and so there are just so many ways that we are put into a situation of distress. And so one has to learn to tolerate. And, and that's a whole subject that we can discuss, but, but as Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, Marta Sparsa Sukuntaya Sitno Sasukadukada Agapayino Nityas Tamsta Tikshiva Bharata. The non non uh, the non permanent appearance of happiness and distress are like the appearance and disappearance of the winter and summer seasons. So the, the winters come and the winters go. The summers come, and the summers go. It's non-permanent. And one um, in the non-permanent appearance of the winter and summer, one should learn to tolerate them without becoming disturbed. And these things will come and go. This is the nature of the material world. So that tolerance has to be there. And that is one of the more uh, important qualities that are required to develop in order to practice Krishna consciousness and especially chanting. Okay, so this um, it's a very short purport, but the verse is very powerful. I would suggest you take some time and read the preceding verses that leads up to this because it's all about the glories of the Holy Name. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Thank you so much uh, for the wonderful class about the importance of um, quality of chanting and uh, how nicely you explained about uh, um, how we have to pray before chanting and uh, even you sent uh, those documents to us a um, couple of times, um, which are very helpful, Guru Maharaj. And, uh, and also you uh, gave the importance of Sishashtakam verses, also and tolerating whatever is happening around us. Thank you so much, Guru Maharaj, for this wonderful class. Um, devotees, and if you have any questions or comments or realizations, you can go ahead. Thank you. Uh, Guru Maharaj, in the meanwhile, um, I just want to share my uh, realization a little bit uh, that uh, yeah, since last year when we, um, during these Zoom classes, you were emphasizing on early morning chanting, um, that is very much uh, helpful, Guru Maharaj. It's, uh, it's changing everything. Like, um, suppose if, uh, if I don't do early morning chanting, um, that affects my whole sadhana and uh, um, all throughout day, I'm doing just my rounds. I feel that. And uh, um, so I feel like uh, sometimes burden, like why I'm not finishing these rounds. But uh, if I'm doing in the early morning, so I feel so easily I'm, I'm doing them. And also, um, um, even though I'm not uh, focusing much or attention is maybe a little poor, but uh, mm, I feel a lot of difference, Guru Maharaj. And uh, so that is really helping Guru Maharaj. Yeah, thank you. And the devotees who are listening to what Srimati said to take that to heart. It's not a small thing. There's a big, a, a big um, difference in the quality of your chanting and in the quality of the activities that you perform throughout the day. That's also there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, even a lot of devotees also shared uh, with me that uh, when, when we do early morning chanting, that helps us to easily manage our day-to-day -day activities. If uh, we don't do early morning chanting, it is all like chaos. I'm unable to manage this or that, or <laughs> a lot of things. Uh, yeah, but one of the problems is we think we're the managers. <laughs> we're not. It's the, the holy name is giving you the intelligence 
Mm. And that's Krishna in the form of the holy name. He says, I am the intelligence of the intelligence. If you don't connect with Krishna, then you what, what intelligence do we have for that day? We need to revitalize and re-nourish our intelligence, just like we, what they, we eat every day to nourish the body. Just like we eat every day to, re, to nourish the body, we all, the intelligence also needs to be re-nourished each day through Shravanam Kirtanam. Mm. Yes, Guru Maharaj. Thank you. Yeah, well, thank you. That's a nice point. I just uh, want to share one more thing, Guru Maharaj. Um, uh, if you allow, uh, previous in your previous classes, you mentioned that um, when uh, when we are chanting, we have to listen to the sound. And uh, you just uh, gave a tip that uh, uh, beginning of the mantra, if you focus on your lips or on your tongue, um, then you'll be able to hear it more attentively. Uh, that's what I remember from your previous classes. If you focus on on the place where from the on your tongue or lips part, um, then you'll be uh, hearing to the mantra more effectively. You were experiencing that. Yes, Guru Maharaj. I also had received feedback from other devotees who've said the same thing. Yeah, that's a technique that can help you increase the quality of your hearing. Yes, Guru Maharaj. Thank you. Thank you. Shri Devi Mataji. You can go ahead, Mataji. Thank you. Uh, uh, Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you for this really important class on uh, how to improve the quality of chanting. I have a question about how to manage the schedule when we wake up early in the morning which is of course the best thing and we chant definitely your whole day is so much better but once you wake up early in the morning how do you combat the tiredness you feel uh, because of waking up early in the morning well you have to see that, that's that's something you have to work with. It's more trial and error. If you're too tired to chant, then, then obviously you, you haven't got enough sleep or else you went to bed too late or there's something there that's causing that. So you want to be more rested for chanting. You, can, you have to adjust. And if you feel a little tired but still able to chant, then combating that means again as i mentioned maybe chanting a little bit quickly quicker and then that helps to hear easily and of course another suggested thing and that's bhakti vinod Thakur also mentions that one can walk around mm -hmm. but mm, other charyas especially some of the iskan charyas also say that and it's they're correct also that uh Walking around means the extra effort to uh, maneuver yourself in the walking process, which can also be a point of concentration. You're thinking about how to walk, where to walk, walk and how to avoid, you know, walking certain places. So, yeah, now there's people who love to walk and chant as opposed to sitting and chanting. And there's others who uh, do both. And there's others who simply sit through the whole mantra. You have to find what works for you. Mm. No one can, that no one can tell you. Right, right. We have to, that's, yeah. that's, tri that's trial and error. Okay, okay. That's part I of guess the... you have finished part one of uh, Mahatma Prabhu's Japa retreat, which he offered online. And he encouraged us to think of this Japa retreat as a Japa weekend in Vrindavan. He said, get into the consciousness that you're actually there. And tomorrow, make your, your homework is to do the best Japa of your life. So he's giving us an assignment, encouraging us to really focus on the holy name and not get into this, or get away from the mindset that this is a routine thing. His uh, uh, message today was 
let every day be an effort for you to chant better than the previous day. Yeah, that's the idea of a, of a what is, these are called, um, what's the word, 20? Affirmation? Affirmation, that means a positive statement in the mind in order to, to uh, focus on that as the results of your activity. I'm going to do this, and then you do it. Mm. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. So what in that case is, yeah, that will, okay, I'm going to chant better today than I did yesterday. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for emphasizing but, how important this is. And, and what Mahatma emphasizes, and the downside of it is, oh, you know, yesterday was so difficult. I think to, today is going to be even more difficult. <laughs> you, 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 you're setting yourself up for defeat, that's all. <laughs> right. And he cautions against that. He says if you do bad chanting, that sets the tone for more bad chanting. While if you make the efforts towards good chanting, you're sowing the seeds for more good chanting to happen. Right. Even if the chanting is not so good, you shouldn't dwell on that as what's going to happen today. Mm -hmm. I'm going to overcome that. I'm going to improve. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Please give us your blessings so that we can improve our japa. That is my prayer and my fervent when, hope. When Krishna actually sees that you actually enjoy chanting, you'll see also a qualitative increase in the, in the chanting. Mm -hmm. yeah, and part of, part of enjoying the chanting is that you actually look forward to the chanting. Mm -hmm. Not like, okay, here we go, two hours, I could be doing something else, you know. <laughs> Yes, Guru Maharaj. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Devotees, any more questions or comments? Uh, Guru Maharaj, I think uh, there are no more questions, Guru Maharaj. Okay, we're at quarter to the hour. Yeah, still 15 minutes. What is there? Okay, um, uh, maybe I'll come up with a schedule very soon to set out a series of verses on different on topics centered around uh, Krishna's Leelas. So let's see. Uh, I'm, well, I'm trying to manage my particular situation with this situation that I find myself in and it's taking up more of my time to yes. organize things outside of the immediate area so anyway we'll try to pick a nice topic related to Krishna's leelas in the upcoming days like that sure Guru Maharaj, uh, Guru Maharaj can we do uh, if you are okay May I suggest, can we do one round of chanting? Now? Yeah. Let me just, I think my beads are in the next room. If you give me a minute, I'll be right back. <laughs> 